video, we'll be using bricks. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at creating different templates for different products in our shop. So at the moment, you'll see that music has the same layout as accessories. And so what we're going to do is change the layout for accessories and the layout for music. So to do that, head over to bricks. And the first thing that we're going to do is add new. And I'm going to call this the music template. I'll publish that. And now there are two things I can do. I can select template type from here, or I can proceed to edit with Bricks, and then Bricks will ask me what kind of template I'd like to use. So let's uh, let's do it this way. Let's just go with edit with Bricks. So music template, edit with Bricks. And now you'll see I'm going to be asked a series of questions. So what kind of template is this? And it's a WooCommerce single product. So I'm here in the single product. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that this is only assigned to music. So I'll head over to the template settings, head over to the conditions, and let's add a condition. So the first thing we're going to select is the post type. And the post type is going to be products. And the second condition then is going to be um, terms and we're going to select um, music right so we're saying only apply this to the um, products post type of products and also then just apply to the terms the music terms now um, that's going to create an issue um, because you can't assign to a post type and to terms because you're now creating the condition to assign it to both. So the better way to do it is to delete the post type and then just to assign it to the term, which is music or product categories, and then to save. So now we're going to assign this just to music. So to get started then quickly, I'm going to hit the plus button here. And then we're going to choose a container. So here's the container. And you'll see now that if I select the container, I just have a, a single container. Now there are a couple of ways of adding container. If I want to add some columns now, I can click on this little icon here and select a two column layout. The other way to do it is when I add the container is you'll see here that we have this little icon in the top left hand corner, click on that. And immediately I have the two column layout. So that's how we set up the two column layout. I'm just going to delete one of those. And now what I'm going to do is add the um, some of the product items. So to get started, then let's go to um, let's go with a product gallery, and we're going to do the product gallery here and then we're told that um, select the content to show for a better preview so to do that what I'm going to do then is head over here to the settings we'll go to template settings we'll go to populate content select the type now we've said that this is going to be for um, a single product so we'll sing single post page and then we're going to go to now we've said this is going to be for music so i'm going to just do a search for album there's album product and apply the preview all right so now that preview is going to be applied while we're designing and there you can see we have the album information the next thing that we need to do is add the um the product title so you'll see we have a whole lot of product um, options here now on the left hand side all under product so what I'm going to do is add the product title the uh, product price um, short description the product stock the um, add to cart and then I'm going to just follow that up with the product meta and there we have now the information and we're also immediately told that stock management is not available that's not always provided when you're working with um, builders now what i'm going to do is just add a bit of spacing here so margin first and then padding 
and I'm going to go with 15. If I want to uh, put the padding all the way around, we just select that link, and now I have that padding all the way around. What I might want to do as well is, as you can see here, my columns are different sizes, and that's basically largely due to the image. If I'm only ever going to have one image and no um, additional gallery images, then you might want to align uh, the two items. So what you might look at doing then is under container, we'll head back to content here and we will say um, in the container, we have um, flex selected. And now what we need to do is stretch the two columns. So by aligning cross axis, you'll see that both columns are the same height. So if we were now going to apply that to the middle, then that would work quite nicely, just like that. Now, of course, we can move things around. So let's have a look at the price. We click on the price and we have the regular and sale price topography. So the font size will make nice and big. So we're going to make that um, 24 and let's change the color um, to red. So that's the regular price. And then the sale price, we will make that just to make it completely different, let's give it a completely different color. And let's make that um, 20 pixels as well. So as you can see, then we have the 24 pixel for the items. Right, so now I'm going to save that. So that's the album. We did change on the price. And now that that's saved, let's do a preview. So I'm going to go to preview mode, which opens up a new tab. Um, and here is the preview mode. And then if I want to view it on the front end, I can click on view on the front end. So there I can see it. And um, yes, the items are moved in the middle, but the pricing changes weren't applied. So let's just head back here. To go back to Bricks, just head on the back to bricks icon and then we're going to have another look here so let's see what we've got so i did go to the regular price typography and we did make some changes but the changes um, didn't take effect so let's just have a look and see if there's another way of applying those i'm going to go to typography under the style window and there we'll select um, red and we'll also change the font size to 26 so there we can see the changes are taking effect and then what i'm also going to do here under the styling under layout is we're going to add some spacing underneath and maybe we'll just do that at 15 and that'll just give us some space between those two and if an item is being managed with stock let's just do the same there with the margin of 15. right so We've now applied the margin, so that's going to be a bit better. And then maybe what I want to do is just center all these items down the middle of the column. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the content and you'll see I'll set the align block to center. Uh, sorry, I need to set the align cross axis to center so we have everything in the center if you find that something isn't moving across just click on it go over to style go over to the layout and where the width is set uh, simply set to auto and then you'll see that it moves across and it'll be as wide as it needs to be with the information that it contains and then we hit save now you'll also see here that the preview updated automatically and you can see the changes have already been applied. Now we said this must only apply to the music category. So if I go to the music category and I go to single, I'm seeing that that's great. Now let's go back to the shop and let's look at another category. So if I go to belt, now you'll see that the standard layout is still being applied. So that's great. That's what we wanted from this particular item. Now what we'll have a look at doing is we'll look at something, a product maybe that has a few more settings. So if I head back to shop and I scroll down, we also have this logo collection, which is a group product. 
and you'll see that it has a slightly different layout. So let's go and have a look and see how we can address uh, the requirements. So we're done with this template now. So on the right hand side, we go to the folder templates. And now what we're going to do is create a new template. So we hit the create template button. And this will be for um, grouped or bundled products. The template type, once again, we're going to do a single product. And we are going to then just create template. So there's the group products. And now we head over to edit. And now that I'm here, the first thing I'm going to do once again is head over to settings, head over to the template settings, head over to conditions. And in this case, it's going to be um, for a grouped product. So let's have a look at the how we're going to assign then to the group product. So if I open up the logo collection, you will see that we're in the category clothing. So we can't target the group product by the category. And I'm not sure if there's any other way um, other than, oh, there we have the group product type. So we can now target that quite easily and include and save. So that's how we're going to target the product type that is grouped. Now what we do is we start again with a section and maybe we'll just do the layout straight off. And we're going to go with two columns. And in the left hand column, we're going to add some elements. So as we click on add and we're in products, we have the product information available to us. And then on the right hand side, once again, we're just going to go with the product title. Now the product price will depend on the selection um, further down. So for now, we'll do the product price. Uh, let's do the um, product short description. Let's do the um, add to cart. And then let's also do some product meta. Now, this is obviously not what I want to see here because I want to see the group product. So we just quickly head back here to the template settings, populate content, and now we're going to choose the group product. So we just have a look and see what it was called. It's called the logo collection. So we'll type in logo and there's the logo collection and we apply the preview and now the page loads and we have the logo collection in front of us. So very quick and easy to set up. Also now uh, you'll notice that we have this, um, this these gallery images. So if I align this now in the middle, um, it would be in the middle of the images as well as the featured image. And that might be, it just might look a little bit unbalanced. So I'm not going to do that in this case. But what we can do is certainly make this a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do quickly is add some spacing in this column. So head over to style layout and let's add some padding normally 15 pixels and if we hit the little um, link button here it applies to um, all the padding so that's done the other thing we want to do is highlight the price so now last time we looked here at the regular price typography and that had no effect so if we try that again you'll see it has no effect. So we're not going to bother with that anymore. We're just going to head straight over to style. We're going to head down here to typography and we're going to go with a 30 pixel. So we'll make, in this case, we'll make it nice and big. And then we're also just going to add a bit of space there and we'll just do, um, uh, you can use your arrow keys as well. And then you'll see that as I move the arrow key, the margin changes. So Let's make that 15. I'm going to do that the same on the price. And what's nice is that as I go to each element, the layout element remains. So if I go there, I don't have to keep selecting it again in the left hand menu. So that's a really nice quick way to work. And then of course, then also under the short description. So there we have it. And now what we can do is maybe do something more interesting with this. And maybe what we're going to do then is head over to style. And in this case, let's add some spacing. So we'll add uh, 
once again we'll link it like that then what i'm going to do is head down to um have a look let's see if we can find borders and in the borders then we're going to set that um, we'll link that as well so we'll make it um, one pixel all round the style will be solid the color let's make it that turquoisey color and then the radius once again we're going to lock and we'll make that five pixels all round and the other thing we'll add a box shadow so box shadow and we'll make that zero five ten let's choose the color just go with black if that's uh, too much you can just adjust the lightness um, alternatively you can adjust the saturation um, up to you and we're just going to make sure that we're actually with a very black color um, right so i think that um yeah that kind of works so there we have and we have a border so we have this key line in green and we have the border around so immediately my eye is drawn to this area to do something in order to transact so if i click on that space we're now clicking on the add to cart you'll see here now that um, under content we have the various items here variation stock quantity and the button so if, for example under quantity i can change the background and that will just highlight the quantity area and what we'll do is we'll just lower that and then we want to make sure that the um it would be nice if we could set the color of the items there um that would just mean we could go with a whole lot of different backgrounds but in that case um it doesn't look like it's immediately obvious how to do that but you know we can just give it that subtle styling and then uh, the border we can give it a border so once again uh, one pixel all round and style of solid and the color something like that just to highlight the various elements and i'm not going to give it a border radius so that's how we can style the individual element there and i'm just going to take that transparency down a little bit more and um, because that zero is not very clear so let's have a look at that to change that zero and um, this is where you're going to enter once you've entered the quantity of course that'll be more visible right then what we can do is um uh, now this is calls for variations we don't have variations here but we do have group products and let's just see that will have no effect here right so we don't need to worry about a background color here so we'll clear that right so that looks like um let's have a look at the price typography and see if it would work here if we made the no it doesn't look like the pricing typography has any effect here um and we don't have any stock indicators so i think that's pretty much all that we can do except for the button so now what we can do with the button is we can set the background color let's set it to that turquoise and then what we can also do um, under typography is set the typography to white if we wanted to do the hover state then we move up here to this button here styles for pseudo classes and then what we're going to do is um, select the hover state so then here in this block you would select hover so now we're in the hover state for the button and what i'm going to do then is change that background color to black and i will change the typography to that kind of turquoisey green so when you hover you will have that effect and then i'm going to head out of that so when you hover now you'll see you have the text turquoise and the button in black and maybe we want to just make that button look like a button a bit more so i'm going to head back to the button and you'll see i can select an icon here um, and you can choose from different um, options so 
I'm not sure what's going to be the best here. So we'll look for a cart icon. Uh, let's choose that one. Right, and you can see the cart icon. And when we hover, the cart also changes color. So there we have the cart icon applied. Icon typography position on the left. And then we can also make it a little bit bigger. So it looks like that. So very easy then to add the icon. If we head back to the button standard, we also have these border settings. And if we wanted to, we can also add a border radius. And also, um, yeah, that should be it. All right. So there we have um, considerably enhanced that section. And that's only for the group product. Then I'm going to save. And I'd like to preview that. So preview mode, that looks good. And now you'll see the logo collection. Let's open that in a new tab or open it up. Right. And there we can see our changes have taken effect. And when you type in the number or use the plus, the number is very visible. So, yeah, that's a nice um, way that you can highlight. And then if I go back to the shop now and I go into my accessories, I'm still looking at the accessory item. If I go to um, music, then of course I'm looking at music, which is a different layout. And then if I go to hoodies, then in hoodies, I have a different layout as well. So that's how you can then create different layouts for your products in your shop. So just looking at this hoodies layout. So there we have the hoodies. And now you'll see that this hoodie doesn't have a star. This hoodie doesn't have a star. And I think it's this hoodie with a zipper that has a star. So you can also apply a template style to a specific product. So I'm going to close that editing window. And now let's just um, edit with bricks. And what you'll see now is that that page has actually been edited individually with bricks. So it hasn't inherited the template um, that we've assigned, but the page has actually been edited. So that's going to override the category edit. So to show you how to do that, this one has already been done. So what I'm going to do is have a look at doing that to a different product. So I'm just going to go back to the store. We're going to go back to shop. And now what I'm going to do is choose, um, let's choose this beanie. And let's now edit the beanie now to be completely unique and different to the other products in that category. So you'll see when we say um, edit now, we have this um, base template with nothing showing. And that's because we're not inheriting any template design. And if I go to settings here, there are no um, paid settings, theme styles to choose from. So we are now purely just editing a single page. Add the layout. And in this case, I'm going to go for a three column. And here on the left hand side, I'm going to add the product gallery. On the far right hand side here, I'm going to add the add to cart. So add to cart. And then uh, what I want to do is I'll come back to more formatting there. And then over here in the center, we're going to add the product title. And we're going to add the product short description. Um, and then here on the add to cart side, we also need to add the price. So we'll add the product price. Right. And I just want to move that above. So we'll have the price, the add to cart. Here we're going to have the um, beanie, the short description. And let's see if there's anything else we want to put in there. Um, uh, let's just, uh, we'll leave it at that for now. And then we also have some product meta. So let's add the product meta. Right, so we have the product meta now. And yeah, we can get cracking. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, just have a look at the columns. And I do want to add some space. So around the beanie section here, we're going to go to style. We're going to go to some layout some spacing we're going to link them and just make that 15. 
We're also going to make 15 in the right hand column. So while we are looking at the spacing area, let's do that. And now what I'm going to do um, is just highlight the spacing a bit more. So to do that inside that column, I want to add another element. And the element I'm going to add, um, I'm just going to add a div. And then what I'm going to do is just drag everything into the div. So you'll see nice and smooth dragged in. Right. And now what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to go to my container formatting. And let's just go down in this column. I thought we'd set, uh, we didn't hit the link button for all the way around. And what I also want to do is just in the container, head over to my content and then stretch the item so that the columns are all equal height. Then what I'm going to do is come back to that div where I have my content in and go back to style. We're going to go to the padding here with 15 and we're going to give that a border as well. So we'll scroll down here. Um, border, let's give that, uh, make that all round. So we'll make that one, we'll make that solid. And then the color, we'll just leave it at that turquoise color. And then we also want to give it a radius and make that radius. Uh, we'll just make it 10 all round. And what I also would like to do is give it a box shadow. So while we're on the box shadow, let's go zero five and a blur of 10. So we've given that a blur. Let's give it a color. Um, yeah, that looks great. So there we have our pricing container. And what I'm also going to do is make that div. I'm going to give that div a layout, a width of 100%. Right, so we have that at 100%. And then what I'm also going to do is go over to contents. And what we'd like to do in our div now is just align the items um nicely so well, i just like to line them nicely down the center of my div um, at the moment everything is 100 percent across so what i'm going to do is when it comes to the price i'm going to change that width to um auto uh, add to cart also auto and then that's already on auto. And if I head over here to my column to content, and I would like to center everything in that. And I can align like that. So yeah, just having a look here at the content display. Let's go flex and then um, rows and then align the center. So that's how we get our div then to show nicely in the middle of our div. And then the price, of course, I'm going to change that typography to a much bigger number, make that uh, 20 or even yeah, 25 looks good. And we just want to add some spacing. So let's just do the layout. Um, let's go to the margins and we'll just make it 15. And under the add to cart, we're also going to do 15. So there we have our three column layout that was nice and quick and easy. And we've also then highlighted the right hand area here where the customer is going to experience undergo that call to action. And because we've edited a single page, what you'll notice now is that if I go into preview mode, the beanie looks like this. If I go back to the shop and I look at other beanies, so uh, we're in the preview mode. Let me just um, head out back to the shop. So back to the shop here. And now when I look at the other beanie, it has the standard layout back to the shop and look at that beanie. And now only that beanie has its own style. And as you remember, music, we gave a style which looked like that. And we also gave the group product 
the logo collection a different style. So that's pretty much then how you can start to um, work with bricks to create different layouts for your products. And um, the nice thing, if you ever want to go back and edit, now here you can see what you're able to edit. So when you click on it or hover on edit, edit the header, header, edit content, group products, or edit the footer. So what we want to do is go back to um, bricks. And what we want to do is have a look at the templates. So we've created a couple of templates now. So when we look here, we can see quickly that's the music template and that's the group products template. To edit then very quickly, edit with bricks. Now we're back in the template. So it will load up the product information. And if we wanted to add some more elements, we can. So I'm going to add another container and then that container I'm going to pull to the top, so right at the top of the list. And in there, I'm just going to add a breadcrumb, add, just type in the word breadcrumbs, and the breadcrumb is added at the top of the page. And then, of course, um, maybe that container will go to style, layout, and let's just give it some margin. We'll make it 20. So now we've added the breadcrumb to our page and let's have a look at related products. So what I'm going to do is add a container and it'll be a single container again. Um, I'm just going to collapse that and I want to move it down. So in the container here, then I'm going to add a heading. So not a product title, just a heading. And I will change that to um, related products and everything in here if i go to content i'd like everything to be in the center and now i'm going to add a product listing of related products and i just have to click on that and the related products have been added now there are no related products because there are none for this particular um, product so that was um, not completely required at the moment and then the styles, let's add, of, uh, not spacing, let's add a margin of 20. Right, so now um, let's save that. And now what I'm going to do is let's go and preview that. So you can see there are no related products and we don't want that heading to show. So I'm going to go back to bricks. And I'm just going to, um, let's see if we can set a condition for the container to only show if there are related products. So uh, content, settings, um, let's right click. So no immediately obvious way of setting the condition on this container. Um, the container, we can save it as a template. Search settings, content style. No, nothing here that we can use. Um, but what we can do while we here is we could save this as a template and add it to the other templates. So to show you how that works is I'm just going to save as template and I'm going to call this um, related um, product. And now what I'm going to do is template type, um, let's say section and no template bundles and I'm going to save it as a template. So now I have that template. I'm going to go back. So you'll see here related products. And what I'm going to do now is head back to my templates and I'm going to open another template and I'm going to look at this um, music template, for example, and I'm going to edit. And I'm going to add that section template to the music template. So very easily then go to templates, look for my related products, insert template. And there the related products have been added to 
the um, to the album. I just want to um, close the container, and then here, and then I just want to style and layout, and just add some space. So there we have the related products saved. So that was very quick, and then I'm going to go back to my templates. And then I'm going to go and have a look at the, so we've done the music template, we've done the group template, um, the other templates pull in the default style from WooCommerce. Um, but that's how easy you can create template sections and then import them into your pages. If I want to edit the related products now, I can go to edit here. And now I'm just going to edit the related products. Um, so what I might want to do is on the heading for example i want to maybe uh, let's give it a background so a background color we'll make it that turquoise color we'll go to typography and we'll make that white and then what i'm going to do is give that a width of 100 percent right and then of course i'm going to give it padding of uh, 15 and then I'm going to go back down to my typography and set it in the middle. So now I have my related products nicely displayed. And we'll save that. And then what will happen now is that when I'm on the website, we should see all of those changes take effect. So let me go back to the shop. And now we created the template for album and we inserted the related products and those changes haven't taken effect and if i go to the beanie the single product there was no related products there and the other one that we looked at um, let's just have a look here back at templates uh, we had the group products and the music template and then the related so um yeah changing the um related um, products template didn't necessarily um, change it where it was deployed on the website so what i'd like to do is head back to my templates here i'm going to go back to the music template and i'm going to edit that and you'll see there's the original um, related products and I'm just going to delete that. Oh, that's not what I wanted to delete. I just wanted to delete this container. So let's... Um, um, we should have saved it as a global template. So what I'm going to do then is delete and template, perhaps a, maybe that would work. And now I'm going to insert the related products with the updates. And now we have that updated um, template saved. So right, that's how easy it is then to add template areas to your website. So if you have several and you're building out a layout, that would be one way of, of doing that. Uh, now we can do a preview mode. And let's go to the front end. And yeah, that's looking a bit better. And then also, let's go back to bricks. And what we can also do is just add the, uh, let's add a container, and then we can add a breadcrumb. So the breadcrumb could also be one of those template elements that you add on a regular basis. So uh, you could also do that. Um, here's the container. Load it up to the top and then add, look for breadcrumb. Breadcrumb has been added. Let's style it and layout and then, right, there we have the breadcrumb applied. And now when I'm on the website and I go to album, right, so we have the album and we've styled a product individually. And now what we can do is, then have a look at a template then 
uh, if we if we want to we can leave all the other products with a standard template or we could also create a template then for all the others but then obviously exclude the um, the music template so um, to do that um, quite easy and we'll just say templates add uh, template title we'll just say um, all products for this one right and uh, let's just do that and then the template type we're going to go a uh, single product and we'll create the template and then I'm going to head over to the um, all product section here and first thing I do is go to settings template settings conditions we're going to set the condition here so add conditions and what we're going to do is once again we're going to head over to terms and we're going to select the term but in this case we're going to exclude music so I'm going to select music and hit the exclude button so now music will be excluded completely and we'll save and then I'm just going to build the layout so it'll be two columns what I'm also going to do straight off the bat now is um, also add a section and put in the breadcrumb so let's just add a section here um, and I'm going to move that to the top It'll be a single container I'm going to add the breadcrumb breadcrumbs so the breadcrumb has been added and we'll just give that layout and let's just give it a bit of a gap right and then here very quickly then we can add the elements so we're going to add in a product gallery on the right here we're going to add in the product title we're going to add the product price we're going to add the short description and we're going to add in the add to cart and the product meta so that's all done and then very quickly you could of course create a class so instead of doing this the way that i'm doing it every single time you could then just apply a class and then those classes would take effect and uh, let's just quickly do this then 15. right and then the other thing that we also want to do is head over to the container content and we want to stretch those columns like that so we're going to leave it like that we'll go over to the typography um, for the pricing let's do it like that let's change the color um, and then we're going to add some space so once again then we're going to add 15 pixel uh, yeah in margin under each item and that'll just give it some space right there we have the items added and now what i'm going to do nice and quickly of course under templates i can add in that related product so here we have the related products i'm going to hit insert template and that's uh, i don't want it inserted there so i'm going to drag it out like that and then columns here we're going to add a spacing of 20 oh wrong place um and the container should i say we will add a of 20 right so there we have the related products included and now uh, i'm going to save that and what we'll do is i'm going to head over here to the shop so that template should now apply for example um, we've set it not to apply to music so everything that isn't music now should um, have this template applied so i'm going back to settings template settings um, conditions and i've said terms excluded so exclude music and i'd like to apply this then to all the other terms right now if i go to the shop um, sunglasses no that's also an individual template t-shirt with logo um the belt 
no um, app, no goodies. Right, so it's quite clear that it hasn't been applied. So what I'm going to do then is adjust my condition. Um, so the terms, it mustn't be terms. And we're also looking for the post type of products. So let's save that. So now we're saying it must be a product, but not in those terms. So now if I go to cap, you'll see that it's applied. I'm going to go back to the shop. I'm going to have a look at the belt. It's applied. I'm going to have a look at the beanie with logo. It's applied that. And then I'm going to have a look at the individually edited. And you'll see now that um, that appears to no longer be individually edited. And if I scroll down to the sunglasses, which also was individually edited, you will now see that. It has inherited um, that template. Although I have a funny feeling that because I said product, okay, no, that's definitely doing a different template on the album. And the beanie, um, if we did edit, uh, let's just go back. So edit with bricks. So you'll see how the beanie, we had a three column layout. And when we then set the condition to apply uh, this template, we set it, it then overrode the individual template. I wonder if there's another condition here then that um, uh, individual, select individual, and now we can select the beanie. So which beanie is that? So this is beanie on its own. So we're going to select Beanie um, and we're going to exclude Beanie and save. Head back to the website. Oh, no, we're not heading back. I'm going to go back to preview mode and then from here open it up. So Beanie is now back to the uh, three column mode on that individual Beanie and on the other Beanie, it should be the normal shop mode. So that's how you can uh, target those products with specific layouts. So they're not, their layouts are not overridden by the website. So here's another example. This one has its own layout. So I'm going to head over here and I can add to that same condition um, sunglasses and save. Head back to the website, refresh, and now sunglasses. Sunglasses is back to its own individual styling. And in fact, these are all products in the same category. And you'll see now that CAP has the template that we created. So that's pretty much then how you can create different templates for different products in different categories, how you can create a template for a specific product, and then also make sure that its um, layout isn't overridden by the uh, global template selection. Well, I hope you found that um, interesting. Thank you for watching.